every leader that I've come across and worked with would love their teams to deliver more stuff and to deliver quicker. Now, I'm an impatient person myself. And so I often find myself, even though I know it's not necessarily a good thing, I find myself sometimes eh, subtly hassling other people to try and go a little bit faster. Now, I know that the most likely consequences of pushing someone to go a little bit faster than they actually naturally can is a compromising of quality. Because either that person's going to consciously cut some corners here and there in order to meet a new deadline, or they'll feel under pressure to work longer hours or, or rush something, and therefore they'll make mistakes without realizing. So if you're a leader of a team, how can you get more out of your team without compromising quality? Well, this is a touchy subject, but I think I've got some tips that might be able to help. So here you go. The first one is to realize that people want to do their best. People aren't inherently lazy. They don't deliberately want to underperform. Sure, there are times when they want to do the bare minimum. We all do. But inherently, given the choice, people would rather do better than not do better. And that's a worthwhile thing to remember. I was working with a group of people a while ago, a few years ago now, and one of the people in the room decided to share his view that people are inherently lazy, and in order to make sure that anything of worth got done, people needed to be managed. He was forthright in his view, and he genuinely believed it. You could tell he genuinely believed it, and you could tell that he also had multiple examples evidence, if you will, of his philosophy, his his view of people being true to him. And there was no way that my philosophical view was going to have any impact on him because he had seen his truth. I was prepared to just agree to disagree. However, one of his colleagues decided to offer an alternative perspective. Remember, this is someone from the same organization. And this person said, well, it's strange you should say that because my people are pretty good and we're operating in the same environment. So are you just hiring badly? Is that the reason why your people aren't trustworthy, aren't proactive, need to be managed? Or is there something else going on? And we had a debate for a while. It was an interesting debate. And the conclusion that that group drew was that people either tend to live up to your expectations of them or live down to your expectations of them. And that believing in people's ability, believing in people's goodness, increases the chances of people having a greater ability, or at least putting that ability to, into action, or being good people. Um, so I found that a really interesting one. Now, that's stuck with me for years. And I find that while I'm prepared to be wrong, I find that believing that people want to do their best increases the chances of people doing their best. So that's tip one. Realize that, believe that, uh, experiment with that belief, if you will. My second tip is to help the people that you're working with understand the context. Indeed, there's no real point in you or your team delivering more stuff or delivering it quicker if they're delivering the wrong stuff. And understanding the problem that we're trying to solve, the reason that we're here, will allow people to make more educated decisions when faced with ambiguity. It can also inspire people, knowing why you're here, knowing what all of your efforts, all of your time, tapping away the keyboard, creating the reports, going to meetings, whatever it is that you're doing, knowing what that is for increases your sense of purpose, increases your sense of inspiration, and increases the chances of being more productive because you want to achieve that goal rather than just do the task. Tip three is to help people slow down and focus. Generally speaking, we get more stuff done when we're doing less stuff. Pick the most important thing, get it done, and then move on to the next thing. The more items we have that we're multitasking at, the less productive we are, the slower we are at getting things done. So it might sound counterintuitive, but if you want your team to speed up, 
then help them to slow down. Tip four is to help them to understand what success means. And this is tricky in a complex environment because quite often we can't predict what success will be. But we can have a good idea as to the problem that we're trying to solve, even if we don't know how we're going to solve the problem or what the solution will look like. So helping people understand the problem that needs solving and an idea as to when to stop. It will reduce the chances of over-engineering and gold plating and over-delivery. And this helping people understand success might not be a one-off thing. It's not necessarily something you can do in advance. And it's not something you can necessarily wait until the end of the delivery to do. It might be something you need to check in on a regular basis to say, yeah, that's kind of right. A little bit of a tweak there. Yet yeah, you got it. That kind of helping teams understand what success is. Tip five is to make the work smaller. The smaller the work packages, the easier it is to get them done. The easier it is to plan them, the easier it is to estimate them, the greater sense of completion, the greater sense of closure, the more of a rhythm your team get into, and therefore the more motivation they get and the more momentum they get. So make the work smaller, you'll see it done quicker, and you'll see more of it. Tip six is not to leave them alone. Now that's tying into my fourth tip there in terms of understanding success. The more you can help them when they need help, the quicker they will be. Just because somebody needs help doesn't necessarily mean that they will ask for it. They might not even realize they might not feel comfortable asking for help. But if you're there, then they don't necessarily need to ask for help. We can just discover together. So don't leave teams on their own. Collaborate, give feedback, help. Tip seven is leave them alone. Yeah, I know I just said don't leave them alone. Obviously, it's a balance. If you're there all the time, then that can be quite overpowering. It can stifle a team. It can easily lead to micromanagement, fear, lack of innovation. So give the team some space. Let them focus. Let them innovate. Let them try things. Let them get creative. Yes, leave them alone, as well as not leaving them alone. Find that balance. Tip eight is give them what they need. Now, we might not know what they need yet, so keep asking. Keep looking. And whenever they need something, see if it's feasible to give them what they need. If they have what they need, they're more likely to be able to deliver. Tip nine, we're getting a little abstract now, but role model behaviors. If there are some behaviors that you think would help the team deliver more, whether it's around being organized, whether it's around prioritization, whether it's around asking for help, whether it's around collaboration, whether it's around simplification, whatever it is that you think would help the team deliver more, try role modeling those behaviors. If they see you doing those things and it works for you or other teams, then maybe there's a chance they'll take those behaviors on themselves. Tip 10 is understand their drivers and help them match them to the work. This is a little bit about tapping into that team's intrinsic motivation. And it sort of builds a little bit on that second tip of helping them understand the context. All right, so if this is a team that enjoys seeing people happy, then see how the work maps into customer satisfaction. Find out what their drivers are, find out what their motivators are, and you'll see a team much more productive because the more work they do, the more their drivers are being realized and the more of a kick they get out of the work. So those are 10 tips that you can put in place to help your team be more productive. Obviously, this isn't about manipulating your team to get more for less, but it is about giving the team the opportunity to realize their potential. And that is, going back to our first tip, that is something that that team wants. Every team that I've come across, given the choice, would rather be more productive than less productive. But what about those of us who are actually working in teams rather than leading teams? Well, I think you can take these 10 tips and apply them yourself, whether that be for a team or for you as an individual. So assume positive intent in your colleagues. Ask about the bigger picture behind the work. Be curious. Be inspired. Notice when you and your team are possibly working too fast and ask for or create smaller work items. Invite your stakeholders in and collaborate. 
but also create and protect some quiet time. Ask for or take what you need and role model your own behaviours within the team. And then finally, reflect on your individual and your team drivers and try and build them into what you're doing and how you're doing it. And before you know it, you'll have organically increased your pace of delivery without compromising your quality.